The third version of the tucks and tilts exercise that I like to do, especially with people who've had sacroiliac joint issues or hip issues, is the sacral tucks and tilts. Now this one is an advanced exercise, it does take a little while to master, but for the people who need it, it can be an absolute blessing. First of all, I do the towel origami for the sacrum. So I take a little bit of a, hand, a little hand towel and I fold it into thirds, lengthways. I then fold in the center into a little triangle to create a little nest for the sacrum. So if I was to place this this way, the sacrum sits in that little V. Now this doesn't look like much, but when you've had pressure on your sacrum for a long time, it can really make a difference in offloading it enough to do the exercise. It can also be a really restorative position. I have also been known to stack two yoga blocks and rest the sacrum in between to release pressure in there when I used to get a lot of pain around the sacrum. So first of all, we're gonna set up with that. Next, we're going to go through oscillating the sacrum. Now, a lot of people don't think that there is much movement in the sacrum. As a therapist, I treat it all the time. There's often issues if one side is stuck or if there's too much movement. But in people who are generally very hypermobile and their sacrum kind of swims around a little bit too much, I find mastering these biases and directions of control can really help in mastering your pelvis and getting it to kind of stick back together again. This is also very important if you've had multiple natural births because often the sacrum feels a little bit disjointed if it hasn't really connected back again afterwards. Our body does amazing things during childbirth, but it is important that it comes back together again afterwards. I just wanted to show on the model what movements we're going to do because sometimes it's a little bit hard to wrap your head around. During this whole exercise, we're going to try and keep your ilium, these bones of your pelvis, still and we're going to get a little rocking of the sacrum this way. So I have my fingers on my hip bones, front hip bones, then we're feeling this little rocking of the sacrum here. Again, it's really small, almost subliminal. So if you're worried that you're not doing anything, you can rest one finger up on the top in the middle of the sacrum so that you can feel it coming up and coming down as you do the glide. When it comes to doing the biases, it's not the same side to side and rotate as it is in the low back. The axis is in an X. So I will think of the bottom, the bottom right side going down and the top left side going this way. So it's this direction and then the opposite. So tilting this way and this way rather than directly side and this way. This is just based on the angles inside the sacroiliac joint. Now when I do this, again, you won't see, see much, but it's important to see just how small it is when you're doing this exercise well. So I place the towel down and find where that is for my sacrum. And even lying down, this feels quite nice. My fingertips go onto my hip bone. And then I want to see if I can feel, just like a little hammock, the sacrum sliding down this way and then back up this way. And down and up and down and up. Now you may or may not be able to see any movement there, but I can feel it really gently gliding on the inside. If I want to double check, I can use my finger at the top and see if I can feel that gliding movement, which I can. And then doing the crossways angle. So if I think of the top right side of my sacrum dropping down and right at the bottom, the lower left corner coming up and then I reverse it the other way and then down top right, down bottom left. And I like to think of the descending version rather than the lifting version. And then on the other side, 
top left drops down, bottom right comes up, bottom right goes down, top left comes up. And it's very visceral. It feels like it's happening right in front of your sacrum, almost like your organs are helping with that movement. As always, double checking that you're not holding too much tension around the hips. And those big back muscles should be nice and relaxed the whole time. And it feels really lovely and almost meditative to do once you've mastered it. However, please make sure that you don't use this as an exercise to frustrate yourself. Make sure that you've mastered the regular tucks and tilts and the micro tucks and tilts before trying this one. You need to have a really good representation and feeling of this area in your consciousness before you start trying to do these super subtle movements. So if the other ones are still a little bit tricky, keep an eye on those first. But if you are used to working with your pelvis and you're really wanting to kind of dive in a little bit more deeply, this is a great exercise to do. This is also wonderful for high level dancers, for high level adage, especially holding an attitude or your arabesque, freeing up this area and mastering the control of your sacrum within your pelvis can give you a huge amount more range. So I look forward to hearing how you go with that. Talk to you soon.